So a lot of study tours, we have Ethiopia there, and uh, uh, quite a lot of them. Northern Cyprus, we have to mention, move to the next one, Northern Cyprus, because honestly, it's been a lot of problem on Northern Cyprus. So we had youth come and tell us, please tell everybody, stop going to Northern Cyprus. We did that some time ago, and some said, how can you tell people not to go? And I'm saying it again. If I go to Northern Cyprus, think twice about it. Over 20 students have been killed over the years, and nothing happened. So these students came themselves and said they have to embark on awareness that don't go to these places. Northern Cyprus is recognized only by Turkey. It's not a UN recognized nation. So if you run to Nigeria, we can't do much, but our students are being killed on a daily basis and nothing is happening. So again, I'm going to appeal that uh, we need to take a strong decision about places like Northern Cyprus. Now we also know that a lot of African Americans, the historic African diaspora, come to NITCOM to say, we want to come home, what can we do? So we have the door of return in Bedagri. Again, because of COVID, we haven't had it. But honestly, it's a very emotional event. It's a very spiritual event where they walk through that door, through that walk, the slave trade walk, and then we receive them like kings and queens, and the whole community comes out. I can't describe it unless you see the vision, but it's a very emotional event, and they are looking forward to the next one. So that's our own bit of engaging the historic African diaspora. We had about three, two? Three. Three. And honestly, uh, if I, we had, when Ghana was in the new year return, we started it, but on a small scale. And we are proud again of what we did. And Governor of Lagos State has been very supportive, but we couldn't hold it because of COVID. But we're planning the next one, which may not be this year, because again, elections are coming. Of course, the presidential table meetings. Mr. President, as we all know, has been described as the most diaspora-friendly president. Everywhere the president goes, he meets with the diaspora, he engages with them, and has a fantastic and robust conversations with them. And we're glad to have been, to have been part of that, of our presidential time home meetings. The feedback we get is always very, very positive, and we're glad that Mr. President does this every time he travels, and it has had a lot of impact on our diaspora. So a lot more pictures from there. I can see Gaba and Femi's head popping up <laughs> So quite a lot of town hall meetings, um, and we're putting a compilation of the town hall meetings particularly together. Now during COVID-19, our diaspora played a major role. They got together, taxed themselves almost about 80 million naira and gave uh, PPEs to every state of Nigeria. And something particularly happened. When they were doing it, they said, we do not want to um, import. Why should we import it to Nigeria? So they got a firm in, in one of the eastern states. I don't know whether it's Aba or Imo or Enugu. And the guy did the first set of PPEs. NCDC rejected them. They were not up to standard. So they rushed back to him. And I think Funke had two staff and uh, and Toby coordinated. They rejected his PPEs. So he went back and did them again. They said it was not good enough. We went back and did them again before they accepted them and were presented. But guess what the good news is? This guy is now certified by um, is it WHO as one of the best PP producers in the world. Now he has even been on top of a list. And now the world is <laughs> getting his PPEs. You know, because we, believe, we have to believe in ourselves, and I thank the diaspora team for doing that. So we're able to do that. Zumunta Association, based in the U.S., also does a lot of political projects in Nigeria. They were also here. You can see the governor, or 